came out. Good to see you folks. Still a day the Lord has made. It is a little cold and rainy. Had hoped that maybe the uh, winter was over, but I guess not quite yet. Not quite. Uh, for the announcements, today says please join us Saturday, March 18th. That'll be this coming up Saturday for church council at 10 o'clock a.m. Ladies Club will meet downstairs afterward. And then memorial service will be Sunday, March 19th. We will have a meal directly after church. Please sign up on the back table if you are able to provide a covered dish for the meal. So make sure you sign up for that. Make sure you come to church council. As I say every time, you ought to know where your money is going to go, folks. If you give for money for the church, you ought to know where it goes. If you're a member of the church, come to church council. If you're not a member of the church, uh, and you're saved, you can come and we can make you a member of the church. We can do that for you. But uh, memorial service then will be Sunday uh, on the 19th, and we'll show the uh, uh, slides of those of our loved ones and friends that have gone on. That always is a touching thing for me. I don't know about you folks, but seeing the old people on there and uh, those that have gone on, I've got a lot of family and friends on there. And it's a moving thing for me. And we got a, uh, we got a song. Yes, we do. Let's, All right, let's, let's start with a the song then. Let's start with 299 then. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. That's a good one. <laughs> Two ninety-nine. Glory to His name. <clears throat> down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to Knee replacement. Okay. Kim? Uh, a friend that 
I work with, her mom's been in and out of the hospital since the since <coughs> October, and I think they finally have determined what's wrong with her. And I think they're supposed to do surgery today, so just please keep her in our prayers. And absolutely, absolutely, yes, ma'am. Me and my family. They all seen her family, Ollie. Um, a friend, or yeah, a friend of my sister-in-law's. Her dad passed away last night, so remember her. Keep doing some yeah, bud. Yeah, uh, me and my family and Keith got a uh, procedure on the side tomorrow, and then uh, Pat's got some uh, tests too. Okay, Stanley. Me and my brother is. Okay. Geneva, you ever had that? Some old Terry did. I'm sorry. Um, but we pray for Geneva also. Uh, yeah. I'm sure request as well. Yeah, Terry. Um, I have some older people that I take care of, and one had to put. His wife and I'm um, nursing. Oh, so he he was just sobbing. As I could hear him sobbing. Sure he, was. he said, uh, "I feel like she's dead." Absolutely, yeah. it's a tough tough situation. Yeah, it is. Sad situation. So just pray for him. Yep. Anybody else? Yeah, Amanda. Um, Kyle Banks' brother-in-law has to have open heart surgery. He's like young thirties. How old is he? Like I want to say he's like more like thirty-three. Yeah, I yeah. think it would be fairly young. Okay. Don't make much difference, does it? Young or old or whatever. CA? I make prayer of this. My Georgia people's got that COVID. That's her place. Okay. You don't hear about that as much anymore, but it's certainly around. Probably be around wrong from now on, I would assume. <coughs> uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody got a silent request on your heart? Because God does know your heart. Let's have any man that will come on up and we'll gather around and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. before you, Heavenly Father, for the come before you in the throne, Lord, and uh, for just having that privilege to be able to come. We thank you for the privilege to be able to come into your house today to worship you in spirit and truth, Lord, and that the song says, Lord, glory to your name, Heavenly Father. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you mean to us. Thank you for what you've done for us in the past. Thank you for what you will do for us, Lord. We ask you to continue to take this service in your big hands today, Lord, and you guys direct it. Bless us be with it. Anoint me, Lord, with the power to preach a message that would uh, be, be pleasing to you, Heavenly Father, and that would be something that someone needs. Lord, prepare the hearts of those listening to receive it, Lord, and let us meditate on your word. If nothing else, Lord, just the, the, the word of truth that we do read, Lord, today. So let us meditate on that. Feast upon it all the week, Lord, and we'll thank you for it. As you continue to bless us, continue to be with us, God, direct us, bless our country, Lord, and uh, in a mass heavenly father and it, and it uh, we, we know lord that things will just get worse and worse until the end and we just uh, just leave it all up to you lord knowing that your way is a better way your thoughts are higher than ours and your ways are higher than ours lord and we thank you for what you did so can you bless me with us god direct us make of us what you would have us to be lord and let's give you all the glory all the praise and all the honor in jesus christ's name we do pray and amen amen, amen. <laughs> if you're able to, go ahead and stand up. If you're not, you can remain seated. But go ahead and stand up. We will take up an offering, a, a gift uh, of any kind. If, if those on the video would like to, to send in a gift, you can send in to P.O. Box 151 Alexander, Kentucky 41001. We are New Macedonia Baptist Church at 12th and Central in Newport, Kentucky. Come down and join us sometime. Thank you for those folks here that have come. 
And uh, uh, may God bless you for what you give, what you have given, because He will. He, you can't outgive God. You know, Brother Pat used to say that all the time, and I totally believe that. Absolutely, you can't I believe it. I believe it as well. Dad was going to sing us a song here, I think. Yes, and, uh, let's do. Uh, well, I hope everybody helps me too. Everybody will help you. <laughs> I some, hope so. Some just might listen. Some tend to just listen yeah. sometimes. Uh, 366, I will sing the wondrous story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The wondrous story. 366, everybody sing with us. Yes, sir. This is for everybody. Yeah, you do do Just do three or four. Just do it all. But they'll be a while counting. Okay. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea I was lost but Jesus found me found the sheep that was astray through his loving arms around me drew me back into his way yes I'll sing
just one side. Yeah, we'll just get them on this side. Can you move the cameras around a little bit? Absolutely. We can get them big shots. Right you want that to happen. No, no punk rock. <laughs> I probably don't want to get caught in the head, does she? Do you, Robert? I didn't think so. No. All right. Beautiful children. Whenever you're ready. Good God Almighty. It's like, what? What? You didn't You got to start. Oh, Count the times I've called your name some broken light. And you showed up and patched me up like you do every time. I get amnesia. I forget that you keep coming around. There yeah, ain't no way you'd ever let me down. Good God Almighty, I hope you find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where I Without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. You say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why should I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like the sun in the morning, I know you're going to be there every day. So what on earth could make me be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Because I know where I Without your mercy, so I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. All right. <laughs> You know what, I think it'd be really nice if those kids' parents would come up at some time and get together and sing a song. That'd be a great, great idea. That'd be wonderful. Maybe even, is Nikki coming up and sing one now? Okay. Well, maybe we talked her into it. Maybe they could even join them for a song up here one time. That'd be, that'd be good. Everybody get involved. Who else has got a song? Got one? We got time for both for all of them. No, go ahead, we'll get it. Come on, boys, don't fight over it. No, no, you got no, time. He's up there closer, so he'll okay. go over it. Don't fight just a little bit though. <laughs> this is a song that Truman Turner actually asked me couple years ago to sing. And I'd never heard it, but he, I think he said his grandfather or his dad one he used to sing it all the time when he was real young, so it actually meant a lot to him. So. God's, uh, hold to God's unchanging hand. <clears throat> time is filled with sweet transitions Not on earth unmoved can stand Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God. 
God's unchanging hand. Trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if thy earthly friends forsake you, still more closely to Him cling. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Covet not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Seek to gain the heavenly treasures that will never fade away. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright your home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. You got one day on time you want to sing? Come on up. I've heard people sing it, but I've never heard people sing it. Move that mic again. Come on, wherever you need to. You need them a little lower? I'm fine. I've never had much in this world below, but I'm going to a city where the street is pure and gold. Christ made me a man. I'm a child of the King. Shake hands with the poor.
After you leave this earth, it only ain't going to matter to you, is it? No, sir. One way, it doesn't matter where you go. If you go to heaven, money ain't going to be. You'll have more, far more riches than you could imagine there. But uh, if you go to the other place, which I pray none of you go, no. then uh, you won't need money there either. You can't buy your way out of there or anything else in there. But as a, as a, even if we are poor on this earth, we're looking for a home in heaven where we'll have everything, won't we? Yes. Have everything our heart ever desired. Uh, that's good and righteous, that is. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to uh, Ezra, Ezra chapter 1, verse 3. Ezra chapter 1, verse 3. Ezra, Ezra chapter 1, verse 3. I think I preached on this a long time ago, but I'm going to give you some different ideas on it today. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is, is my help and, and where my help comes from. And at some point, most of us will, or if we haven't already, going to need some help. <clears throat> and there are different ways that we need help and different things that we need help for and, and need a desire uh, for help for. When we're born, of course, <clears throat> pardon me, when we're born... Uh, and up to a certain age, we need all kinds of help. We need help with everything we do. Uh, uh, you know, our parents or our guardians provide almost every single thing that we do. A baby, for instance, can't feed itself, it can't change itself, it can't really do anything for itself. But you know, babies do show the respect, their, their, their appreciation, rather, for the things you do by loving it, uh, by the affection they give toward you, uh, their caregivers. But of course, when they become teenagers, that all changes. But when a baby, when a baby gets to the point where they don't want the help anymore, you know, when they don't need as much help more, we, we you know, we, we say that they're uh, getting independent. We're getting independent, and that usually makes us a little sad, you know, when we've taken care of them all the time, and all of a sudden they don't need us so much anymore. But on the flip side of that, when they get bigger, when they get uh, almost grown, and they're still wanting us to do everything for them, you know, they become needy, and we don't we don't want that either. And, and, you know, there's some people that are still needy adults. <clears throat> but uh, uh, there needs to be a middle ground somewhere for that. You know, there needs to be a, a middle ground. We need to be responsible for our own needs and our own wants. But we still should be able to ask for help when we need it. We still should be able to. And sometimes we don't. Sometimes our pride gets in the way of it. And that keeps us from asking uh, help. And, and there are times that we suffer needlessly because we won't ask for the things that we need. We won't ask for help. You know, there, there's a lot of times where you can where you can get help for things. There's a, you know, if, if you use computers, any there's helplines. You call you call uh, or a helpline if you have a problem with a computer. You know, and, uh, and if you use computers, you'll have trouble at some point. It'll be either a malfunction of the computer or it'll be an operator error. But you'll have trouble, as we all do. <clears throat> now there was a uh, <clears throat> President Ronald Reagan. I just saw this not long ago. He said one time, this is a different thing about help, but he made this quote. He said, the most terrifying thing to hear is, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> that's, that's probably is true. That's a bad thing to, to help. You know, sometimes money can help you. Sometimes money can help you. Money can uh, get you out of a situation that you get into. Sometimes money can help you make it a raise at work, and that helps out a lot of times, make you feel a little better. And, uh, or you get uh, a loan. You get a loan for things when you need help. Or somebody just gives you some money to help you pay bills. Because I tell you this, you need money to survive in this world, don't you? You do need money, and the Apostle Paul told us you need to work. If you don't work, you don't eat. We understand that. I mean, that's even when you were on the farms. I mean, you, you had to work to get the food, uh, to make the food you need. If you don't, you don't work, you don't eat. But you know, uh, uh, God don't need your money, does he? Nope. He don't need. What could God do with the money? But you know what God does? We took up an offering today, and we, and we told people they could send in a gift, and, and God will allow you. He will allow you to give part of that money back that he's blessed you with that he gave you in the first place. He'll, he'll allow you sometimes to give money to that uh, ministry or a function that may help people out in need somewhere. And God tells us to be a cheerful giver. Yeah. He said not to give grudgingly, you know, give of your own free will, be a cheerful giver. Uh, when you give to the house of God, it's, it's to the furtherance of the gospel. We can understand that. Now, I'm not telling this today to try to get people to try to squeeze money out of you, try to pressure you to give money. I'm not, that's not what this is about at all today. Uh, what you give to the church, what you give to charities, whatever you give to, that's between you and your creator. 
That's between you and God, and, and nobody else needs to know anything about that. That's just between you and them. Ezra here, and this is, and this is kind of what I'm getting at here. Ezra, he, he records the history of rebuilding the temple that was torn down. Him and Nehemiah, both their books, record going back to Jerusalem after, after Babylon and, and, and building the temple of God up. And he wanted to stir up the hearts of the people. He wanted to stir up the hearts of the people to go and to, and to build and he also wanted to stir the hearts of those that had some means to support these people while they were doing that. In Ezra chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 it says, Who is there among you of all his people? His, uh, his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Ju Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts, besides the free will offering for the house of the Lord, uh, for the house of God, rather, that is in Jerusalem. So he says, he says, help these people out. If they're doing the will of God, if they're doing what God would have them to do, help them out. Help them out monetarily. And the Apostle Paul, we remember him talking about that before, about receiving things from people. And he says, not because uh, I desire to give to you, but so that you could show fruit. And that's what we do sometimes when we do that. Go ahead and turn over uh, Exodus. Turn back to Exodus chapter 23, verse 5. Exodus 23, 5. And I remember talking about this the other day or the, a few days ago. I don't know if it was in a church or if it was at Sunday school. But we're talking about a good neighbor and how important it is to have a good neighbor. And to be a good neighbor. Uh, you can count on a, on a good neighbor to help you. I mean, I've got a real good neighbor, and, and you know, I borrow things from him, and, and then uh, he helps me do stuff, and I help him do stuff. And, uh, you know, you look out for each other. When we go on vacation, he gets our mail, he takes out our garbage, and he, and he brings it back and everything, and uh, he keeps an eye on the place. And it's good to have somebody to do that for you. God says, love thy neighbor, didn't he? Yeah, he told absolutely. us to do that. Yeah. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And, and he says in Proverbs 18, 24, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. It's a good thing to have a good relationship with your neighbor. Yes, sir. Or anybody else for that matter. Uh, but Jesus also said this in Matthew chapter 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now it's easy to be good to those that are good to you. It's easy to help those that will help you. Uh... But helping and loving your enemies, that's a little harder to do, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's a little hard to do. You know, it's hard to get rid of them hard feelings and them bad feelings. It's hard to get rid of that stuff sometimes. Now, we know, as I just read you there, where Jesus commanded, though, that we do that. And not only did Jesus command that, it's also an Old Testament law. In Exodus 23, verse 5, it says this, If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee, lying under his burden, and wouldest forbear to help him, Thou shalt surely help with him. He tells us to help. If we see a neighbor in need of some kind, even if it's a, an enemy of ours, we're to help him. A lot of times, you know, you take a, an enemy and you, you kind of, you, you'll make a friend out of him instead of an enemy. Not always. It's not always that way, but sometimes it is. Go ahead and turn over to Daniel chapter 10, verse 10. Daniel 10, 10. Daniel 10, 10. We get help from family, we get help from friends, we get help from neighbors, as we were just talked about earlier there. But sometimes we need the kind of help uh, that humans can't provide. If you read that book of, of Daniel very much, you know that the prophet Daniel was, was taken captive from Babylon when he was a very young man by King Nebuchadnezzar. And he was held there as a servant for the king for, for most of his life, maybe all of it. And we know for 70 years at least, and probably longer than that, we're never told that Daniel ever went back. Uh, but you know, while he was there, he was always obedient and loyal to God. He always was a good servant to God. He never lost his faith. He never lost his hope in God. He never did. Amen. And God blessed him for that. God will bless you for faithfulness. Yes, sir. He will. He'll bless you for obedience. Yeah. And he, you know, he, he tells us that he will. And, uh, and uh, Daniel, because of his obedience, he was promoted a couple of different times. He was made the chief of the magicians. Made the chief of the magicians, and he was also made the governor of the province of Babylon. And the Bible says that the king gave him many great gifts, many great gifts. Now God gave Daniel gifts. He gave him a gift of prophecy. He made him a mighty prophet, and he gave him great, great prophecies about the end times. 
Uh, Daniel had dreams and Daniel had visions, but Daniel also was able to interpret dreams and visions. Daniel and some men at one point, the Bible talks about, they were down there by the river uh, Hittichel, and Daniel had a vision. Now this wasn't just a dream, this wasn't just a trance, he actually saw this, and we know he actually saw this because the Bible says the men that were with him felt a great quaking and it scared them so bad that they ran and hid. They ran away, completely away from the area, and it says that Daniel said that he alone saw the vision. Daniel says that he fell on his face when he saw the man. I spoke to him because the man said, because it said the man's body was like that precious stone of the barrel. It said that his, uh, his uh, appearance was like lightning, was as lightning. It says his eyes were lamps of fire and that his hands and his feet were as polished brass. So it was quite a sight to behold. This was obviously an angel of some sort. And, by, and then he says that his strength left him. Daniel says that his strength left him. He <laughs> fell flat on his face. Uh, so as I say, it was no doubt an angel from heaven. And Daniel uh, chapter 10, verse 10 says, And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Then he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the king of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. And now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. Well, yet the vision is many days. I want you to turn over to Isaiah. I'm going to talk about this a little more, but I want you to turn over to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 3. Isaiah 10, 3. Isaiah 10, 3. That was the archangel Michael that came to help, uh, to, came to help that angel. And that was apparently uh, to, uh, to get him away from, from uh, for which the devil had withstood him as an angel of Persia. And that's, uh, you know, that's wickedness and evilness in high places. And uh, we got a lot of that today, I'm afraid. Uh, and have had for many, many years. <coughs> we know this, that we know that God is the creator. We know that he's the master. We know he's the Lord of the Lord, the King of Kings. He's the master and he owns all things, but he has given into the devil's hand. He's given Satan the power over the earth, and he's made him the God of this. We're allowed him to be the God. And that's with a little g, the God of this earth, until the, uh, until the times of the Gentiles, the fullness of the times of the Gentiles become, the Bible says, and that'll be at the end, of the uh, tribulation period. That tribulation period is seven years, of course, we know. And it, the Bible says it'll be a terrible, terrible time for those on the earth. It'll be an awful time for those on the earth. Nothing like it before, nothing like it oh, will be after. There'll be nothing like it. The beast, the Bible talks about the beast. It talks about the Antichrist. It talks about the false prophets and the horrible things that they'll do. The miracles that they'll do that, to, to deceive people. Uh, and they'll wreak havoc. The Bible says they'll be... Uh, it would be horrible on this earth at that, at that period of time. <coughs> and then there will come a time when it will be God's people against the devil's followers. They'll, be, uh, they'll square off against each other and uh, it will be good against evil. Now you've got to decide at some point which side that you're going to be on, don't you? Yeah. Yes, sir. You've got to decide. You know, uh, uh, I think Moses said one time, uh, you know, that talking about what God told him, I set before you this day good and evil. And he, and he urges you to choose good. Yeah. And choose life. He says, that, he says the evil is death and the, and the good is life. And he urges you to choose life. It's going to come to that too. It's going to come to that. And it always has been actually, folks. Uh, there will be a point where people will call for help and there will be none. Yep. Yeah. There will be no one to answer. They're, they're talk, the Bible talks about where there will be a famine for the word of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. You won't even be able to hear it. You won't be able to find it. People will seek to read the Bible. Right now, right now we have all the liberty in the world, and we don't always take advantage of it. Yeah. There'll come a time when you cannot have it. You cannot find it. There won't be anything. Isaiah 63, 5 says, And I looked, and there was no one to help. But, I, but Isaiah also said this. He don't leave you without hope. He said this, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Right now is the time, folks. Amen. It's coming. It's going to get worse. It's going to get so bad that you can't. Now, Isaiah asks a very important question here in Isaiah 10.3. And Isaiah 10.3 says, And what will you do 
in the days of visitation. And in the desolation which shall come from far, to whom will you flee for help? That's a great question, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, sir. To whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave your glory? To whom will you flee for help? That's a wonderful, wonderful question. It's going to be a question that uh, everybody should ask themselves. Go ahead and turn over to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, 10. Psalm 46, 1 says that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. Who better to call upon when you need help? There's none stronger than God. There's nobody smarter than God. No one cares for your soul like God does. The devil certainly don't. He'll deceive you and thinking that he will sometimes, but he'll take you to hell. There's no one that can help like God can. can. Psalm 108, 12 says, Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Man can only take and help you so much, can he? You know, I take it, help you so far. Romans uh, eight thirty one says, "What shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Who can be against us?" I mean, that's pretty good words, folks. Absolutely. You, you got some pretty good help there with God. God can help, and none can hinder. David said in Psalm one hundred nine twenty six, "Help me, O Lord, my God. Oh, save me according to Thy mercy." That's how we get saved, and according to the mercy of God. We needed a Savior, and He sent us a Savior. And God made this promise to Israel. He made this promise to Israel, and this same holds true for us today if we're obedient. Isaiah 41.10 says this, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will help, uh, uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And you can, uh, you can search it out and find out that Jesus Christ is the right hand of God. Yeah. Turn over to Matthew chapter 15, verse 25. Matthew 15, 25, over the New Testament. Psalm 121, 1 and 2 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence my help come, my, cometh my help. He goes on to say, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Listen, don't wait for the government to help you out or the police to come and help you. Look to God. Look to God. Because they can't help you in the, in the, in the, in, in the end of the whole thing, in the end uh, game. They can't help you. They, they may be able to help you uh, <coughs> preserve your life a little bit here on this earth <coughs> against enemies that would harm you. But Jesus said this in Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but not able to kill the soul, but rather feel him, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's who the fear is, isn't it? God can definitely destroy your body by sending you to hell, your soul, your body, every, every bit of you. But he's the only one that can save your soul and give you to heaven also. He's the only one that can save your soul. Amen. When Jesus was here on the earth, many came to him for help. Then he came to him wanting help for, for a variety of different things. They asked him to heal their broken bodies. <clears throat> but you know, if they had realized, just like that uh, Samaritan woman at the, at the uh, well, she asked him, uh, he asked her to draw water, and he said, if you had known who you spoke to, you know, I, you, you, I'd give you these living waters that you would never have to thirst again. If these people that had came to him uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the New Testament there, if they had came to him and asked him to, to heal their broken bodies, if they had just known who he was, they could have asked him to heal their broken spirit. They could have him heal their broken hearts, their contrite hearts. But, you know, they asked him to, uh, they asked him to heal their, their broken bodies and the problem that they had. And there was a woman, the Bible talks about, a woman of Canaan. She wasn't a Jew, she was a Gentile, and they had no dealings with him. And she came to Jesus, she asked him to help. She said that her daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. <clears throat> the disciples told her, told Jesus Christ, said, send her away. She's following after her. She's bothering us. Send her away. You know, she was a Gentile. They were Jews. They didn't want nothing to do with her. But the Bible tells us now there's no difference between the, the Jew and the, and the Greek. Yeah. And it also tells us that this God is no respecter of persons. He don't care if you're a Jew. He don't care if you're a Gentile. He don't care if you're rich. He don't care if you're poor. He don't care if you're young. He don't care if you're old, male or female. He don't care. He's not a respecter of persons. All he wants is 
you to give him the glory. All he wants you to do is worship him and serve him. And he'll give his grace to everybody. Matthew 15, 25 tells us what she asked Jesus. So in Matthew 15, 25, it says, Then came she and worshipped him, which we all, all ought to do that, right? She says this, saying, Lord, help me. Help me. We, can, we should never be too proud to ask God for help. Amen. We should ask him. Anytime we need help, we should do Go ahead and turn over your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. You guys can come on up here. You know, that's what everyone that's not come to Jesus before since then, that's the only thing that they should be asking. They should be saying, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Because no one else can get you out of hell. No one else can. You can't count on the priests. You can't count on the preachers. You can't count on Mary or the saints. You can't pray to them to get you out of hell, can you? You can't count on good works. Can't count on money. The Bible tells us all those things. You can't count on any of those things. After you're gone and de dead and gone from this earth, you can't beg God then for mercy. You can't beg Him because it's too late. It's all the judgment's already been pronounced on you. After you're gone, I can't pray for you. No. You go into he heaven. No. Your loved ones, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your wife, your children, none of them can pray for you then to get into heaven. Nobody can. Because we know this, the Bible tells us over and over and over that it's only by belief in the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection that can save you. The Bible makes that very, very clear. Paul and Silas in Acts 16, when the Philippian jailer asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Uh, it says this in Acts 16, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You ask, well, how does everybody in his house get saved just by that? But he goes on to say this in Acts 16, 32. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all them that were in his house. You know what he did? They went and gave him the gospel. They told him about Jesus Christ. They told him what he did for them. If you want to help somebody, if you want to help anybody, give them the gospel. Absolutely. That's the best, thing. That's the best way you can help anybody. Tell them that they're lost. You know, some people might not like to hear that. Tell them they're bound for hell. Some people probably won't want to hear that. No. But you need to tell them that. You need to tell them. Tell them they're for a devil's hell. Without Jesus, tell them that Jesus suffered and that Jesus died for them. He died for their sins. And we're all sinners, aren't we? Yes, sir. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, all of us are. He took our punishment upon him, the Bible says, our chastisement. It was ours, so we wouldn't have to take it. He took it all upon us. You know, if you need want to help somebody, tell them. Tell them that it's not God's will that any would perish. He wants everybody to be saved. He wants you all to be saved. He wants us all to be. God wants to help you, but it has to be by, be, by your belief in Jesus Christ. He says that it's a commandment of God that you believe in Jesus Christ. That's a commandment. You believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. That He died for you on the cross. Jesus tells you, to trust in His name. He don't tell you to trust in people. He tells you not to trust in gold or possessions. Just Jesus, just His death, just His burial, and just His resurrection. I say that a lot. You know why I say that a lot? Because that's the only way to get to heaven. That's the only way to be saved. That's the only thing. That's what you need. I just need to pound that into your heads if you're listening. Anybody you talk to, make sure they understand that, that it's nothing else that you can do is by belief in Jesus Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection. That's all it is. That's the only thing that can save you. He can save you when you're young. He can save you when you get old. You know, some people think, hey, I've done too much. He can't save you. He can save you if you've committed lots and lots of sin. He can save, he can save you if you've only committed a few sins, but just one's enough to get you in hell. We've all, we've all sinned. He can save you if you're strong and healthy. He can still save you. You need Him then, you know. Yeah. If, even if you're strong and you're healthy and you're young, you still need Jesus Christ because that could be taken from you in a split second. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat or, or, or a stopping of a heartbeat. And you know what? David said he was only one step away from death. Always. Yes, sir. Only yes, one sir. step. That's all we all are. That's We're right. only one breath away from dying. Every single one of us are, and it's going to all happen to us one day. He can save you if you're if you're young and healthy. He can save you if you're old and sick. If you're on your dying, on your on your dying bed, on your deathbed. 
As I said, if you've committed lots of sins, have we've all sinned. We've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. Jesus Christ was the only person that ever walked this earth that was ever perfect. All you got to do here is what it tells you to do here in Romans 10, chapter 9. Uh, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. What's he mean by that? Confess that he is Lord. When you look at that in there, it's a capital L. We say, what does that mean? Well, the fact is, when you want to just say that somebody's the Lord of the house, the master of a house, it's a lowercase l. But when Jesus Christ is called the Lord, it's, a, it's an uppercase. He's the Lord of lords. Amen. Any Lord that is, any master, he's the master of them. He's the master of masters, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the God of gods. He's everything. He's all. He's, he's over all everything. And you just have to believe that and confess that. You know, this gospel is right here in this first verse, uh, 9, where it says, That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You've got to believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he is who he says he was. And thou shalt believe in thine heart, and that's it, folks. Believe in thine heart, your own heart, that God hath raised him from the dead. Because what if you don't believe in the resurrection? What if you believe Jesus Christ? Uh, there's lots of people that believe Jesus Christ uh, was here on the earth. There's religions that believe that he was. They don't believe he's the, the Savior. They don't believe he was the Messiah. But they believe he was a good prophet. What if you believe that? What if you believe Jesus Christ was a great man, that he, that he, that he died, but you don't believe that he rose again from the dead? How's that work for you? That doesn't. That because work. without that resurrection, our preaching is vain and our faith is vain. Amen. It's worth nothing. You have to believe in that death, burial, and resurrection. 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it. That's easy. Well, thank you for your attention. I appreciate you listening today, and uh, hopefully you heard something that might help you. But I encourage you. Tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. Tell them what he did. Tell them what he did for you. Tell them what he can do for them before it's everlasting too late. Because there will come a time when it will be too late. As, as Isaiah said, he called for help. And there was no one came. No one came. There was no one to come. There was no help. Jesus Christ will never let you down. He sticks closest to you, closer to you than a brother. That's right. No one else will do that. No one else will be as close to you. No one cares for your soul like God does. No one does. As we sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed. today and takes it away tomorrow he gives you life forever it's forever eternity is forever you know eternity with God had no beginning it has no end we of course had a beginning we also had a birth 
But if we go, if we go to heaven, then our eternity then begins then, and it never ever ends. Like I said, I'll be glad to take you and show you other places in the Bible where it tells you how to be saved, what you need to do to be saved. Uh, if everybody's satisfied, Jeremy, you close us in prayer. Dear Lord, we just want to thank the Father once again for just giving, giving us another day on this earth. Thank you for giving us safe travels down here this morning, Lord, and yeah. giving us a church to come to. Just uh, thank you for the message we heard here this morning, Lord, and just uh, thank you for your words that are written in the Bible there, Lord, that uh, if we just follow the instructions, it's so easy, Lord. Just yeah. uh, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross so that where you are we may be also, and just... Uh, Thank you once again for everything you do for us. Yes, Just uh, waking us up. Put a roof over our heads, Lord. Amen. Put on our table, shoes on our feet, Lord. All the small things that we just take for granted, Lord. Amen. It's all a blessing from you. Amen. Just uh, once again, Lord, we ask you to watch over the prayer list. There are so many out there that uh, each of us know that uh, we can't keep them straight, but you know each and every one of them, Lord, and what each and every one of them is in need of. Just uh, we pray that you'll handle Amen. that as you see fit. Just uh, thank you once again for all you do for us, and all you continue to do, and just uh, watch over all those uh, in need of you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 See you next week. Have a good week. <laughs>